actually very late in the day to be starting today's vlog. Well, this week's vlog. Today it's like 4, maybe 4.30. 4.30. And I'm starting this vlog now. I've got a nice lolly on the go. Peach iced tea, if you're asking, from Waitrose. Very nice. The day's just kind of run away with me, to be honest. So I got up this morning and we had our midwife appointment. It was my 24 week appointment, which is supposed to be with a GP, but given the situation, I had it with a midwife and it was not my usual midwife that I had it with. And today's appointment, I had to wear a mask and as I haven't actually been to the doctors since my midwife appointment before my 20 week scan. And that was just before lockdown. And I didn't have to wear a mask, but today I did. The midwife had PPE and had a mask on, and it just made it a bit shit. Um, I know it's not the end of the world, I know it's not the worst thing that could be happening, but it just wasn't an exciting appointment because it's just rubbish. I couldn't really hear what the midwife was saying because of the mask. The mask is claustrophobic, I don't like it, so I really feel for anyone that does have to wear that all day because it's so hot, I find. I don't know, I, I thought it would be more breathable. I don't know what I was, I don't know what I thought. But I, I, what I thought was I'd never have to wear a face mask, to be honest. And I totally get it. This isn't me being like, why should I have to do that? I completely understand. It's just me feeling, feeling all the feels about this situation. And yeah, I'm grateful for, again, the fact that I'm not giving birth. And I know it could be, I could be in a lot worse situation, but it doesn't make it any less sad that this is the reality of part of my pregnancy, basically, when it shouldn't be. And it really just, I don't know, just... This week has not been the best week. I'm feeling much better today, but it's now Friday. I attempted to start vlogging on Tuesday. I wasn't particularly low or particularly down. I just didn't really have much to say. And I'll pick up where we left off, which was my midwife appointment, which I got in a bit of a tizzy about. And I was trying to explain rather inarticulately it just, I just felt really sad afterwards. I don't look forward to my doctor's appointments because of everything that's going on. I feel like I could get upset about it now. It's, I, I'm fine and then whenever I talk about it, I feel upset. But just to gloss over, I, I don't look forward to my doctor's appointments because of everything that's going on. I should be looking forward to them. I previously did look forward to them and now I just, it just feels really surreal and I just feel really disconnected from my pregnancy it's just odd and i think i've been fine really considering like with being pregnant and with what's happening i haven't really cried a lot or felt really down about things i've just been really grateful that i'm not giving birth but i think the longer this has gone on and the more appointments i've had to have during this time because every time i have an appointment because they're like a month apart there's a hope that it will be better next time so my hope is that my june appointment will be in a better situation. I might still have to wear a mask in the doctors, but hopefully things around me will be a bit different. I don't know, but yeah, it's just, it's becoming a really surreal experience and that's starting to take its toll. I think it's because wearing a mask just makes it really hard to communicate. And in a doctor's setting, facial expressions and that familiar familiarity is so key and having a mask. I mean, I've, I feel for the poor doctors that have to wear them all day, every day, specifically deal in intensive care and things like that. But it really does compromise everything because that that face-to-face -face basic communication that we're so used to, smiles, facial expressions, seeing someone's whole face, just makes it really, really difficult. And you only realize that when it's when you're in a room with someone and it's happening. When everyone said about masks, I just didn't really think anything of it, but it's really hit home that that is quite detrimental to the way that I'm used to communicating with people and how it makes me feel around different people and what you pick up on. 
I have been still trying to do things and be like as productive as possible. Not productive, but proactive, I suppose. Um, I've spent some lovely days with Hainsley. We've had a really nice time actually because the weather's been glorious. So we've been sitting out on the balcony. We went and sat in the park near us the other evening and we took like some little tin cans of drink. Non-alcoholic for me, of course. And then we made up a little like tinny and a takeaway cup for Hainsley and like sat and pretended we were at the pub by the river. And it was a really nice like evening date I suppose because usually with this weather we, we live right by the river and there's restaurants all along it so we would have gone out for dinner multiple times by now and had lovely evenings over there but we haven't been able to do that so we kind of tried to make our own one the other evening and it was lovely so I've been doing a lot of like adulting type stuff I inquired about consolidating my pension <laughs> changed my energy to supplier because they were ripping me off and also I have tried to start saving so I haven't really ever talked about my financial situation but in short I have spent most of my life in debt in my overdraft and not really having much money I think it's like a similar story to most young people these days and especially most young people that live work or went to uni anywhere but specifically in and around London have definitely worked as a young person in London I feel like it's a, it, we all have kind of a similar story I have a lot of thoughts around debt and kind of opening that conversation about it um, and it's something I feel quite passionate about especially as I'm getting older and now with having a bebe I am like I really do need to get myself sorted things are much better but you know I I, I still dip out and in and out of my overdraft and have done for years I've never really been in that much credit that I've never needed an overdraft and that just shouldn't be the way it is just get used to living that way and actually that's not sustainable and that's that's not great everything that you earn is then not really yours obviously i take full responsibility i have been irresponsible with money i'm not great with money i will be the first to say that but i think there's just a lot of factors with being young and going to uni i went to uni like 10 years ago no more than 10 years ago 12 years ago maybe and it, even just the conversations around choosing to go to uni and the debt that's associated with that they were never had with anyone like myself and all my peers we just didn't really think about what we were taking on it was like well you need you, you go to uni you've got no choice you have to get a student loan you have to pay rent and then you're subject to kind of part-time jobs which aren't particularly well paid so then you're just used to living on credit and then as soon as you graduate from uni like I went into fashion had to intern for like two years so you're not getting paid but you're working full-time you have to commute into London you obviously have outgoings my first few years in London as a working person when I did get a job my monthly wage was not enough to cover my rent my travel and my food like not even the, the basic necessities I didn't earn enough to cover it and I never sat down and budgeted because I I knew that I didn't have enough money so you just lead this blind life of like oh it'll be fine I'll make more money at some point and then this will be fine so I just kind of always back myself into a corner of always having to make a certain amount of money and never really having all that money as mine it was go it was I was making that money to pay off something else because I had all these monthly outgoings which I've now made efforts to dramatically reduce any ridiculous outgoing every month that I have I've cancelled bought bills as low down as I can so I'm trying to reduce those monthly outgoings I'm committed to as much as possible, especially before the baby comes. And, I'm, and I've done really well. Um, this is going to sound like an ad, and it's not my ad, but it is in response to other people's ads. I decided to download this app called Plum that I've seen loads of people doing ads for. But they're people that I do trust in terms of their recommendations. And it's essentially an app that helps you save. And it's not intimidating because it only saves small amounts. You can save big amounts as and when you want to, but it does things like it will link to your bank account and it will do things like round itself round up so everything you spent that week it will round up to the nearest pound and then put that into your savings and it will calculate versus your outgoings and income outgoings and incomings and then let, kind of decide how much you could save and you can adjust things whenever you want but i just thought it was quite a good thing to do and especially at the moment I'm sure money is on everyone's mind and the thought of saving at a time like this I couldn't even contemplate I've never really been able to save I've had many failed attempts I always end up dipping into them this is just quite a nice little thing that I feel like is just carrying on in the background that you don't necessarily notice and then before you know it it could build up thought I may as well give it a go and see how we get on but 
so far I'm enjoying it and it did actually tell me your energy supplier is overcharging you by this much every year and I was like I did I clocked on to that and I already made the change so it does things like that for you which is really great so that's the good things that have come out of this week um, another good thing is the baby's been kicking a lot so I've been feeling it every day and at my midwife appointment she said now you need to feel it move every day and if you don't bring the day assessment center um, and come in I have a number as most people would do when they're pregnant you can just ring it and if you're worried about anything they're so lovely I've rung a couple of times <laughs> but if you're worried about anything come straight in and we'll check you over um, which is really reassuring especially at a time like this but obviously being a first pregnancy the slightest thing and you're just like oh my god is the baby okay so yeah I'm at the point now where I have felt it move every day I've had some people ask me about that because whenever you google it it says between 16 and 20 weeks is when you should be feeling movement and I didn't really I did here and there but I wasn't really sure if it was actual movement that I was feeling and then it's like oh by week 20 you should be feeling loads of movement I wasn't really it was only the last couple of weeks which is from week 22 I'm now today oh today I'm week 25 so I've got an aubergine in my belly now 15 weeks to go oh my god that's oh god I can't look at that so yeah so my movement really didn't start properly until the last week I'd say so that's 24 weeks uh, just to give people some comfort in case they're um, feeling the same one thing that I did actually manage to get done this week but it took me about two days to do it was replant my olive tree here we go you can't really see it and that's probably best because it's shriveled and brown and is basically dead but a lot of you suggested I replant it because the pot was a lot smaller than this one so we're trying to just bring it back to life. I've got it in the sun here because over there is, it gets a bit drafty. I've got high hopes for it. I really, I'm really hoping it will come back to life soon. And then I'm contemplating just here, basically what to do with this wall get here. I've had lots of ideas. I did want to just have a load of big plants like here in the corner. And I thought maybe I'll get a trellis and do some pot plants or one of those kind of like ladder shelf things and put loads of pots I might get a trough type planter can't really decide what to put there I'm, at the moment I'm thinking maybe a trough and then plant some bulbs in there but we're not sure really I'm in constant conversations with my mum about what, to, what the best thing to do is for a balcony she's always saying to me watch Gardener's World repotting that tree though really took it out of me it was like stuck to the pot I broke a pair of scissors and blunted a kitchen knife trying to repot that. Okay, so I got a notification that a package had come for me yesterday and I did just talk to you about saving money, but I have treated myself this month because, you know, sometimes you just have to. It's been, it's been a difficult time, hasn't it? Anyway, I was on Instagram. Right, I need to just go and shut the door because this eerie wind. So I was on Instagram the other day and Chloe Plumstead posted herself in a gorgeous black dress and tagged the brand which is called Olive Clothing which I'd not heard of before so, so I went onto their Instagram because I loved the fit of the dress she was wearing and lo and behold they had many more dresses that were just gorge they're a bit like Cos and other stories that Scandi kind of very oversized but still feminine-ish but not too feminine and I have the dress on that I ordered from them and it's not exactly what I expected as in the fabric I thought it would be a lighter weight cotton it's actually quite a thick cotton like almost like a linen but not as lightweight and creasable if that makes sense it's that kind of cotton oh god now you can hear my washing machine <laughs> there was a lot of dresses on there that I could have easily bought but this was the one I was and it was out of stock when I looked online but I signed up for them to email me when it came back in stock because they had two colours, this one and a navy. And I, it was exactly the sort of dress that I was looking for to take me through pregnancy, but also, as we know, for afterwards as well. This is the dress in question. I've actually just rolled up the sleeves slightly because I have quite short arms and I feel like it looks quite cute with the sleeves rolled up, but they do come to about here. And it's very simple, but that's what I love about it and i can't really turn around and i've only got two done up because i can't reach the middle one but it's got this sort of 
there's like it's called ribbon like the ribbon back dress or something I'm not sure how well you can see that but it basically ties up through the back so it's got almost like holes here so just a really nice simple detail and the best thing i think about this is it has pockets could you ask for a more perfect dress and i love like the neckline is quite high so it sits back which i like accommodates the bump with room to grow um and after when bumps not here anymore i think it will still be fine all the dresses come in one size so this is the one size i'm classified as petite i suppose i'm five foot four so that's where the length hits me i don't really have much boobage even though i'm pregnant they don't seem to have grown massively by this point but if you did have bigger boobs or you were a bit taller or a bit broader i think you can see it would pretty much fit most sizes yeah i could not be happier with this purchase it's just what i imagined it would be and i think we're going to be very happy together so i'll link it down below and even if you don't like this one there are so many dresses there's probably about four dresses that i plan to obtain over the next few months as you know <laughs> treats for being pregnant in lockdown <laughs> Okay, so this is what I was actually wearing today and I just wanted to show you because I have been living in these linen shorts which I mentioned I got a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe from H&M and they are just their linen shorts, very cheap, can't remember the price but they are very, very cheap. Um, I got these in a size 14 and they go around the bump generously, they don't like press in or anything, really comfortable so... When I'm not in my H&M ribs trousers, which are these here, it really just depends on the weather. When it's really, really warm, I'm in my shorts, and when it's not so warm, actually, whether it's warm or not, I'm in my uh, rib trousers. Um, so that's kind of what's been keeping me going through this lockdown, my shorts and those trousers. I think that will see me through summer quite happily, to be honest. Um, my washing machine has just gone off so I need to hang up my washing. Also just um, I forgot to mention that these shorts actually have pockets so if that's not another reason to claim these as the best shorts I've ever had uh, I don't know what is. key not much planned day i have just been tidying the flat did a bit of hoovering around the skirting boards underneath the table you know all those little annoying jobs i find the weekends actually sundays i'm okay i find saturdays a bit of a struggle during lockdown i'm not quite sure why but i do find it the most difficult day to deal with i find during the week much easier and I, I don't know if maybe it's because I would usually be working most Saturdays, either at the shop or because I do hair. Or you just make plans on Saturdays, don't you? Like, go for brunch or have people over for dinner or go out for the evening or go out for the day. Just basically anything but be at home. I do find them a bit of a struggle, so I've been kind of keeping busy this morning. Looking at more house bits. I want to get some new cushion covers for the sofa. And it's, it, that is one of the things I find quite difficult to commit to. Artwork and cushion covers. I don't know what it is, but I feel a real pressure to pick like a colour scheme and then I, tr I want to have like odd cushions, but then I don't know if they match and then I don't know if that's a problem and then I feel like I go too symmetrical. But I just find it a lot of pressure sometimes. So that's what I've been doing this morning. And then not much planned for today and then i will pop out to the supermarket a bit later so yeah i guess we'll just 
see how we go. <laughs> biscuits before but something this afternoon just came over me and I thought I'm going to attempt to make biscuits so I looked up the recipe just to see that I had everything and I did and here we are I've gone for oat biscuits and then I did add in some chocolate chip cookies as well because why not and they look quite good the recipe did say it would make 10 to 15 and I have seven so I think I might have been a bit generous in a couple of the servings, but they look quite good. I've just taken them out of the oven and it says to leave them to cool for 10 minutes. I'm not sure, do they, f mm. oh. I think they're cooked all the way through, but the only thing is because obviously I've made them quite big, they might be a bit squidgy in the middle, but that might be okay. I think I might leave the vlog here just because I don't think I've got anything else particularly exciting to say all that's going on over the rest of the bank holiday. Hainsley has gone out and so I have been organising stuff for his birthday which is next week. It's a very big birthday next Sunday. It's hard to plan a birthday in lockdown because it is such a big birthday. Originally I'd wanted to combine something with the baby so Hainsy's is not a very birthday person so I had thought about having a party for that but also like a baby shower type thing I suppose as well like combine the two for family but we can't do that obviously so I've been trying to think of a way that I can make it fun and special but housebound he will be happy whatever we do so there's not too much pressure but I just put pressure on myself because I like to make these things special. Also before I go I just, just want to talk about this week's wine which um, I have already drunk. <laughs> I'm actually getting worse at these wine reviews aren't I because I'm drinking the drink before I speak to you about Well actually you know it's good because I've already drunk it but I'm not drinking it with you. Let's just talk about this anyway because I think this could quite possibly be my favourite of the wine tries so far and it's also the cheapest. So the brand is Ebony Vale and it's their Chardonnay and this was 3 99 and this, so the last two that I've tried were on the drier side of medium and so for me maybe slightly too dry, I, I liked them both and the first white wine I would get again but I think, I think don't know actually I might get this one over it just because this is ever so slightly sweeter but then thinking about it more than one glass of this and I was a bit like maybe is it too sweet so maybe I'll take that back and I would recommend the Riesling over this one unless you like a sweeter wine in which case I would definitely recommend this one because it's lovely it goes down an absolute treat it's a pleasure to drink as always it's from Waitrose and there we go so i think i will end this vlog here as i keep saying and thank you all for getting this far if you've made it this far and for watching this vlog please join me over on instagram if you would like to and don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well that would be a real big bonus as always thank you for watching and i will see you hopefully next week Mwah.